contrast and you know the different colors, and I usually get what I want. But I'm kind of getting ahead of us, but ahead of ourselves. But uh, <laughs> oh, by the way, this is easier to look at here. <laughs> uh, <laughs> a little better, stuff. Who who is that? I don't know. I just searched model and then it just popped up. <laughs> 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 oh man! I'm gonna, have to, right. I'm gonna have to use that sometime. <laughs> so apparently we are we are live. Um, I uh, I shared it publicly as soon as I started the broadcast. Uh, so you can go to my stream and you you can see the link there and you can share it right from there if you guys want to share it. Um, and uh, we can we can go ahead and kick off and get started on some of these questions. I don't know if if we'll we'll um, have anybody else join us or not. It doesn't look like Dean's going to be able to make it. Which is unfortunate. Um, so let's just let's just do introductions. Um, my name is Alistair Alistair Nickel. Um, I'm a shooter here in Charleston, South Carolina. I run a website, coastalinsight.com, uh, which is a fine art uh, landscape website. Um, I do uh, I dabble in all kinds of other photography as well. Um, and uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the the meteor shower this weekend and astrophotography and how uh, how best to capture. Um, the the light of the stars uh, and uh, not capture the light pollution um, from all of our cities and and everything else. Uh, with us, we have a couple of guests tonight. Um, Chuck, I hope that you're able to get your video working again. Um, um, I'm I'm hitting all the buttons here. Nothing's happening, but uh, I, I'm listening. And remember, I warned you. I don't have a lot to bring to this table. That's okay. Um, I'm listening a lot. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself and, and what you do and uh, uh, and what you do in the area as well. Okay, I'm Chuck Boyd. I'm retired from the local newspaper. I've been retired about nine years. I started a local photography group. We have 350 members now in Charleston. Uh, we get about 25 to 30 each month for a meeting, and the highlight is used with the show and tell. Uh, we got a whole range of photographers from newbies that got their first camera to people like uh, Alistair and others that are quite proficient. It's a good group to run with. Thanks for including me. Thanks, Chuck. Um, just just to let you know, did did you find the button in the top right? Uh, it should be. It should look not right next to the microphone button. It should be a, a a video looking button, and it should have. If you click that, it should turn on and off your camera. Not doing it. It says the camera is on, and I'm still showing a still picture. Don't okay. worry about it. Please don't let me know you guys. No worries. All right, Josh, go ahead. Uh, my name is uh, Josh Carlisle. Um, I'm from Raleigh. I'm a landscape photographer. Uh, some people call it a fine art landscape photographer, I guess, because uh, I, uh, I do uh, at times make some uh, artistic changes uh, to my photographs uh, to kind of get them closer to what I envision them to be. Uh, um, but uh, I uh, I do do some photography in North Carolina, uh, so uh, I I'm oftentimes uh, I'm different coasts uh, and also in the mountains sometimes uh, where uh, where Tommy is, uh, and uh, I also uh, make some frequent trips around the country. Uh, I just got back from uh, Rainier and and um, up at uh, Acadia, and uh, so. Uh, and you're working on a, a big project right now. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, I, I'm, I'm not quite ready to announce it yet, uh, but uh, I, I will have some announcements here in the next uh, coming weeks here. Uh, but uh, it might, uh, it might be uh, of interest to you, Chuck, uh, because it's, it's meant to, it's a, uh, it's meant to assist uh, photographers in, uh, in, in finding uh, interesting places to take shots and, and helping them do so. So. Uh, uh, but uh, I'll definitely, uh, I'll probably be announcing that in the coming weeks here. Not, not quite ready to do it quite yet. Uh, okay. uh, Very good. We're looking forward to that. Oh, and by the way, uh, I, I, I have Facebook and Google Plus and, you know, uh, joshcarlisle.com and uh, all the links are from there and my portfolio and so on and so forth. Very good. All right. And, and Tommy, last but not least. Okay, uh, my name is Tommy White, and I live here in Boone, North Carolina, in the mountains. <clears throat> and uh, I'm a full-time photographer. Um, my background is in retail management. I uh, worked with Mass General Store for many years, and in 2007 went uh, um, photography full-time, and I have a studio in downtown Boone. Um, the studio primarily uh, shoots, you know, 
portraits, weddings. Um, I do quite a bit of commercial and commercial real estate in particular. Um, <clears throat> ever since I started in film photography many years ago, um, I enjoyed landscapes. It was kind of my passion. It's what kind of drove me into the photography business. I still enjoy it quite a bit. And uh, just recently, um, I was introduced to uh, Josh and Alistair. We met in Charleston and uh, went out to Botany Bay for my first uh, go in Charleston, which was just a great time. I enjoyed that thoroughly. And uh, we've been shooting a little bit here and there and got a few other projects working. Um, and that's, uh, that's about it. As far as star photography goes, um, you know, I've, I've dabbled a little bit. I've recently purchased a star tracking uh, unit, which um, is fairly easy to use. Um, I haven't had a chance to use it extensively, um, but I have dabbled a little bit um, with star photography without using the tracking uh, unit. But, uh, you know, I'm interested in, in uh, just hearing thoughts, you know, tonight about um, experimentation that people have used, uh, not, not only in the shooting part, but in the post uh, area as well. Very good. Well, thank you, Tommy. Thanks, Josh and Chuck. Um, let's get let's get started right into it. We're gonna we can just work work through some questions and um, and then we'll address them and just just pretty much open general discussion. Uh, and uh, uh, feel free to to answer anything you you want you want to answer or or talk to any topic. Um, it looks like we just dropped Chuck. Maybe he'll jump back in. Um, the first thing I guess we need to talk about is that star tracker, Tommy. Um, so what is it, and uh, how does it, how does it work, and how do you uh, how does that enhance your experience uh, capturing the stars? Oh, we see you, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, you see me. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so uh, so basically, the star tracker that that I bought is uh, is the Polari uh, by Vixen, and uh, <clears throat> I was researching star tracking units uh, for a while and came up with that one. And supposedly, it's it's one of the newer ones on the market. Um, it's in the um, three fifty to four hundred dollar range, which, as far as star trackers go, is a is a pretty reasonable price. Uh, they can get upwards. Uh, you know, I saw some for uh, ten practically ten thousand dollars. I mean, it's just ridiculous, but. It was uh, it was a looked like a fairly simple thing to to use and basically it's about the size of your camera body and you need a couple of um, ball heads one for it to mount on uh, to your tripod and the other uh, mounts onto the front of it and that's where your camera uh, mounts and uh, basically all there really is to it is you have to be able to see Polari, the northern star. And as long as you can see that, um, you basically just line up uh, the Polari to the northern star. And once you've got that going on, you basically uh, you know, position your camera onto the front wherever you want to shoot in whatever direction that is, turn it on and it basically uh, follows the rotation of the earth. It's real simple. And uh, that's about all there is to, uh, to tell about it. I mean, really where the technical aspect comes in is, you know, what lens you're using and uh, the length of your exposure, your ISO, and all that jazz. So, yeah, so, so does it work with, uh, with telescopes as well, or is it just, just DSLRs, et cetera? Pretty much, this particular um, this particular piece is really designed to be used with DSLRs. Um, most people that have um, telescopes will buy a specific tracker um, that uh, that will do deep space type type stuff. Um, yeah, this one this one's designed specifically for basically a camera to be mounted on top. I wish I had a cam. I wish I had a picture of the setup. Uh, but it's a fairly fairly simple setup. Oh, very good. And if you're in the southern hemisphere, what do you do? Is there's no. Well, players? there's actually a switch. Well, you're uh, not gonna make me tell that story, are you? <laughs> 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 I'll tell it real quick. The very first <laughs> night that I used it, I'm I'm out on Price Lake, uh, and um, and I set the thing up. I was all excited. I had it lined up to Polaris. 
and uh, and I'm I'm doing it, you know, and it, and of course the stars are streaking, and I'm like, you know, this thing is this thing's broken, you know, it's just not working. <laughs> So, you know, it's it's 2 o'clock in the morning, and I'm, I'm like, well, okay, this is great. So I finally, the, the, the forbidden, I went to the forbidden zone. I had to get the manual out. Oh, no, no, no. no. I did. I, I sat <laughs> in the driver's seat. I opened the manual, and on page one, it said, inside of the battery compartment is a switch that says northern and southern hemisphere. And sure enough, it was on the southern hemisphere. <laughs> So does that mean it just rotated the opposite direction? Or? It, it, it's okay. exactly right. It just so basically it, rotated. And so when I flicked it over to the northern hemisphere, it worked like a champion. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the goal of, of it is to um, to allow the entire – uh, your your camera to rotate with the stars and to allow you to to keep the shutter o shutter open for a longer period of time That's, without getting your star trails. That is correct. Now um, I do have a shot. I don't know if we can share it. It's um it's a shot that I took that night. Um, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's a 20 second exposure. I was not using the star tracker. And, you know, you can pick up some great shots that show the Milky Way. Um, it, it, the only problem I have with that is that if you zoom in really close, in other words, if you were to print it, say, 16 by 24 or larger, you can actually see just a slight bit of movement in the stars. And what the star tracker does, and you, you cannot do an infinite exposure the first thing that it tells you is like I think uh, six minutes, I believe, was the longest. Really? That it, re it recommended. That's right. Wow. But if you think about it, a six-minute exposure is a fairly long exposure. Um, but it, it burns those stars in pinpoint, and yeah. so you can you can really catch that core uh, gets really defined. And I have actually seen. Uh, some shots taken with like a 70 to 200 uh, with a like a just a 1-4 coupler of like um, the Andromeda galaxy, which was amazing. Uh, it basically filled the frame, and uh, and of course the galactic core, which is something that I've been after up here for going on four weeks now. But we've had nothing but rain, uh, of course, up here. So, uh, but that those are on my target list. Yeah, so it'll Go ahead, Josh. No, I so said that's. I mean, that's. I I hadn't thought of using. I've seen some of those devices like that, and I always kind of figured that they were out of my price range because, like you said, I've seen the ones that are seven, eight, nine thousand dollars, and I said, no, that's I'm crazy. Not, yeah, I'm not going down that road. But you know, Me either. And, and, I, you know, we, we're always struggling when I've done star photography. Is you know the the compromises you make with ISO, right? You bump up the right. ISO. And you have that nice little rule of, well, you don't need the rule anymore with the, with the device, but you have that kind of rule of 500 or 600 people, something like 800, 600, 600, 500, but it's basically your focal length, you know, uh, divided by 500, and that's how many seconds you can go before you get a star trail. And, and, and I usually pop it down to 500, even a little bit less, because I don't want any, I don't want any little smudges, right? And uh, uh, so, so, uh, so, Josh, for the, the calculation there on your, on your lens, will you, will you run the numbers? In your yeah, head? yeah, so it's, uh, so it would be, uh, you know, if, I, I shoot with my Takina 1628. Uh, uh, so if I'm shooting at, uh, uh, at let's say 1600, I'm, I'm going as wide as I can there. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll be, I think it's like 31 seconds here. Let me, I have, I have, I have calc out. Yeah, 31.25 <laughs> seconds. Okay. Uh, so. So that's 500. Time, that's 500 divided by 16. Yeah, and and, and, and uh, I'm not a math whiz. <laughs> I gotta pull the calc out. <laughs> but and see that, and that's. I was actually slightly impressed to hear what. People are shooting with a 7200 because as soon as you get into those high focal lengths, right. unless you have some sort of device, it's nearly impossible to get an exposure long enough. Even with super high ISO, it's nearly impossible to get exposure long enough to get to get anything good out of it. Absolutely. That's right. And, and, you and know, if I you... should mention that uh, with those uh, bigger focal lengths, that the uh, the exposure time definitely decreases. Um, you know, it's like I think it was less than two minutes um, or something like that with, uh, with recommended. Yeah, with like a two or three hundred millimeter lens, of course, you know, which would make sense. Yeah, yeah, and if you add your your teleconverter onto your seventy, you know, you, or two hundred, you're you're bumping it way up there, and you, and your your uh, um, your your aperture's you know gone down. So 
Right. That just seems like I'm looking at the website right now. It's actually uh, uh, VixenOptics.com, uh, and it's uh, and I'm looking at the I'm looking at the mount. They have a little picture of it, you know, uh, on a tripod and everything, and some of the specs on it. But that looks like a really reasonable price because I mean, a lot of uh, photographers <laughs> they struggle with it because they don't have that lens, right? They don't have you know, they may pick up like a cheap Rokina or whatever they pronounce that, you know, or a Samyong. Uh, uh, but, you know, because it's, you know, the 14 millimeter 2.8, because, you know, you kind of want something really wide, but with that little uh, with that little $300 uh, device, you can, uh, you actually have some options now with uh, with other lenses. That's right. And it is, uh, it's, it's, it's substantial, you know, um, like the pictures of it don't look as substantial as it really is. It's, uh, it's, is probably as much the weight of it is as much or uh, or slightly more than a say um, a pro DSLR body. So it'll take a pounding. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes, it will. <laughs> and, and, and for anybody of interest, uh, my name's Josh Carlisle. I just put it on my Amazon gift list. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you work in the crowd. So, uh, um, so that that's good stuff. You know, I've also seen uh, quite a lot of uh, Josh. You were mentioning some other lens types. Uh, I've seen a lot of uh, of one four or one eight primes being used uh, in in uh, in a panorama style um, to capture the Milky Way and things like that. Now, there's there's obviously some issues with doing that. Um, you know, lining them up being one of them because uh, lining up stars is pretty pretty tricky. Even uh, um, even to the, this amazing software that we have this, these days. But have you guys tried any of that stuff? Have you have you tried you know the 50 or anything like that, Tommy? I have not. The only lens uh, that I have shot with is, is that 17 and 35. And yeah. uh, go ahead. No, I'm just saying yeah, yeah, 17 to 35. Yeah, that's the only one that I shot with. Um, you know that if if we ever. <laughs> If we ever get a clear night again, uh, <laughs> some lenses that I, I want to use are my 10.5 fisheye, mm -hmm. and uh, I definitely want to use my 50. That is a tack sharp lens that I've got, and um, and if I can get things dialed in now that I'm in the correct uh, hemisphere, uh, <laughs> I would like to try the 7. <laughs> I would like to try the 70 to 200. Um, you know, and, and just kind of experiment, but I think you know you've really got to have your settings dialed in when you when. You so f yeah. so for me, I'll just I'll just give my basic settings. Um, you know, when I get out there and I and I see something um, that I like, I'll frame up my my scene, and I'll pretty much go to uh, two eight um, as wide as I can go, which for me is seventeen, uh, and uh, around sixteen hundred ISO, and that's where I'll start, um, and then I'll. You know, I'll I'll go up or down from there. Um, do Do you guys start somewhere like that as well, or is it is it you know? I, I usually start different? starting. Uh, you know, I have I have the sixteen, so I'm a, you know I'm a little bit you know one <laughs> one what is that millimeter wider? Yeah, uh, uh, um, but uh, yeah, I start at two eight. I usually start just because based on experience, I usually start with my ISO a little bit higher on two thousand, uh, uh, just because I found that most of my shots that are keepers are usually in the uh, above two thousand range. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, um, you know, I I, I have shot uh, um, a little bit lower ISO when I was doing some uh, renting some primes. Mm -hmm. uh, I rented um, this is back in my Canon days. Uh, I forget that they have a 14 millimeter prime. Is that right? You I know, did I, I don't know if anybody here shoots ever shot Canon. Uh, uh, but it was a I think it was a 1.4 I think. Uh, uh, but they have, allowed a, me to they have shoot. a 14 1.4. It was an old one. Um, wow. Or may, is it a one four or one? I can't remember. It's been a while. This is this is a couple years ago. But it, but 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 it was it was faster. I for, 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 forgot exactly how how fast it was. But it allowed me to start with a little bit of a lower ISO. Now, obviously, in Tommy's case, you know, I would bump that ISO way down real low uh, uh, since I since I have all the time in the world there. Uh, uh, but uh, but yeah, that's usually where I start because I just I just find that most of my most of my shots that are keepers are, are above two thousand. On the ISO scale. So let's talk about noise, seeing as though we're getting into higher ISOs. Um, what uh, you guys use any special software to to get rid of noise, or or what are you doing for the noise? Just Lightroom. For right Just now. Lightroom. Yeah, I, I I do have Nick Nick's uh, Nick's package, but I and I recently got that when they dropped the price down. Mm 
mm-hmm. uh, not too long ago, but I haven't used that for denoising yet. But uh, but yeah, I just mess around those luminosity scales and uh, and uh, it, it does a fairly good job. And then I'll do the rest of the post processing. Sometimes a little more clean up in Lightroom, but I try to do as I'm, I'm sorry in Photoshop, but I'll try to do as much as I can in Lightroom first. Okay, very good. Yeah, I mean I'm I'm similar. Tommy, do you have any anything? Uh... On that front, or yeah, I mean, the same? you know, I always use the uh, in-camera noise reduction um, when I'm doing long exposures like that, and um, I guess that you know it uses that dark image thing. But uh, I do a, I do a preliminary in uh, Lightroom because I you know I use Lightroom Five, and I think their noise reduction is is really good. It's very solid. Beyond that, if uh, if I need to use one um, towards the back end. Um, I try not to do a, a huge noise reduction at once. I, I, you know, just for me personally, I have found that uh, gra- gradual steps uh, seem to you know work better for me. Mm-hmm. But um, but I, I use Imaginomic Noiseware uh, seems to be a good one, and uh, also have the Nick. Um, but I, I haven't used the Nick a whole lot. Everybody says it's really good, but I just don't have any experience there. I used a noiseware from Imaginomic uh, on my portraits, and I've been very happy with it. Um, so, Alistair, have you used any of the in-camera? I've heard both. I've heard both sides of, oh, don't use in-camera. I'm gonna use in-camera. <laughs> the only difference I've noticed is I get a few of the uh, red burn pixels. Hot, hot pixels, yeah. Hot pixels uh, occasionally, uh, but I, I haven't really noticed much of a difference in the D800 between turning on and off. So I am super lazy. Um, <laughs> And I cannot be bothered to wait another 30 seconds or <laughs> whatever it takes um, for, it to, for it to run another uh, Yeah, another we, we shot. get into like three to six minute exposures. I'll yeah. be excellent at that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So I, I have never I have never turned that on. Uh, I yeah. couldn't be bothered with it. Um, but then, you know, then it, you do have to go clean it all up. And, and Josh, you're right. The, the, I was surprised. Um, I have uh, I have the D800 and uh, the the hot pixels in, in that I thought would be pretty good, um, and it's it's just as bad as every other camera I've ever used. Yeah, I, I was just processing that recent one that we we shot last weekend, and I probably had 15, 20 of them on there. You know, and and some of my shots are at extremely cold temperatures, and I thought that would be you know that would help out the 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 sensor heating up issues, but it doesn't seem to make any any difference. It, it's bad all the way around. Yeah, that's the uh, that's the uh, Photoshop uh, cleanup fun. Yeah, it's not so bad as long as that you know they're they're hot pink, right? And it's pretty yeah, easy yeah. to find them. But it's the it's the ones that are blue on blue tones that you know it's kind of more tricky. Hey, yeah, Do you guys have, uh, have any experience uh, as far as um, you know, like how many how many re- I guess we'll call it say. Uh, 20 to 30 second exposures you can do before things start getting wacky as far as hot pixels and things like that go? I don't have any experience with that. Um, Josh, do you? No, I mean, I, I think, and I actually, I hadn't really thought of that aspect of, you know, uh, you know, if you're doing star photography for, you know, for an hour and just doing lots of long exposures. I, I, we, we were out there for maybe 15, 20 minutes. I'll have to take a look and see if... Uh, if there are any difference between my early exposures versus my my, my ones later on, uh, I, I suspect you're probably right. I mean, uh, uh, it would make sense, right? I mean, that's yeah, the yeah. that's the physics there. But you yeah, know, I've never what, I've never what, heard anything along those lines. Whether yeah, whether one of the reasons I ask that is because I'm interested in doing some star trail type shots. Absolutely. And uh, and you know. You know, I'll be honest. I, I like the longer exposures where the stars aren't cut and you know. Uh, pasted it in there, you know, through stacking or whatnot, mm-hmm. and uh, I would prefer to do, you know, longer streaks, and I just didn't know before getting into all of that if, uh, you know, I mean, you're talking about some really long exposures now, um, and so I just, uh, I was just curious if, if anybody had any thoughts or maybe even read something. So I've got a couple things on that, um, but Chuck had something first. I just wanted to mention that I'm, I'm a new co- newcomer to... Uh, Plugins, and I've been very happy with Topaz, and I bought their uh, Denoise. Yeah. Because I do a lot of uh, nightclubs and music venues, dark and harsh lighting, and the noise uh, factor is a problem. And I haven't done anything like you guys have with long exposures. I'm just talking regular. Can photography. you guys hear Chuck? Yeah, huh? I can hear him fine. Hmm. Can you hear him, Tommy? Yeah, I got him. 
Yep. That's weird. I don't hear him. <laughs> well, you've tuned me out. Yeah. Josh, if you um, if you hover over his picture, there's a thing that pops up on mine that says there's a mute button. Yeah, he's not muted. Okay. Huh? So, oh, now you muted him. Yeah, I just started toggling just in case. <laughs> so, Chuck, um, that's that's a good point. Uh, there's there's lots and lots of different software uh, to handle noise. Um, you know, Lightroom has it built in. Um, Aperture has it built in. Uh, Tommy was using uh, the the Noiseware um, plugins, probably for Photoshop or for or for Lightroom. Yeah, um, I also Nick, have Topaz as well. You have Topaz as well. Yeah. yeah, there's there's lots of good software. Um, I, you know, I've been really happy with Noiseware from time to time. I, I now use Nick software and Lightroom. Lightroom's software is just so good these days that, that I'm just using that. It's so easy. Um, but, but yes, uh, definitely a very important part of the workflow. Um, and, you know, another thing that, that you're bringing up is, is different cameras handle noise totally differently. Um, so some of the cameras, like I, I think one of the cameras you have, is uh, you know, once you get into higher ISOs, you you pick up that noise very quickly. Um, so it's very you know it's very important part to get rid of that stuff. Yeah, you'll have more of a noise issue on uh, uh, crop sensors typically than you will on the full frame uh, sensors. Uh, also keep in mind that um, uh, if you're on a crop sensor, uh, the rule of 500 is different. Uh, the the calculation is actually slightly different because you're on a crop sensor versus a, a full frame. Uh, so if if you're using one of those rules charts you out you you have out there, make sure you're looking at the rules for the crop sensor if you have one. So Josh, don't you just convert your crop to full frame? So if it's 1.5, you convert that up to full frame and then divide it. Yeah, if, uh, yeah. I, I mean, I never shoot in crop, but uh, um, and, and I never shoot in DX mode. But yeah, it's. Uh, I think I have a little. I'll see if I can post a URL. I think I I have one around here. It's a little chart. Uh, but it, it's worth mentioning. Um, you know, a lot of photographers have a little arsenal of uh, of phone apps uh, uh, when they're out and about. Um, and uh, I forgot which one I use, uh, but I, I have a I have one that has a little chart on it, uh, along with some other photography apps I have. So, uh, uh, so sometimes uh, take a look if you have a smartphone, Android, iPhone, whatever it may be. Uh, uh, there is very likely a little uh, helper app in there, and you can just kind of, you know, uh, on the fly put in your your focal length and, and your camera type and so on and so forth, and it'll, it'll tell you. Uh oh, uh oh, that because I just want to really want to make sure that there's any little trails. Hey, if if you don't mind, Josh, I'd really appreciate it if you found that that uh, utility because I I don't have a good one. Um, yeah, me, I, I'm kind of interested. Let me. Uh, oh, looks like my son stole my phone, which means he's watching <laughs> <laughs> TV in bed. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll, I'll hunt it down. If there's right, a, no, no worries, do, do no. a Google search for it or. or yeah, I no, know that you use one called called Starwalk, and I've heard really good things about that. Yeah, I mean, I uh, I mean, I use my this iPad app too that I'll use. I, I think I showed it to you the other night. Um, it's a uh, um, where is it on here? Yeah, Starwalk, and and I don't know if you can see this at all, but uh, it's Looks like loading up, and it even has theme music. Whoa. Nice. <laughs> uh, but, <laughs> How much extra is it for the theme music? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's one of those real-time views, but you can, you can, not only can you find, uh, like, space stations, things like that, it looks like the Death Star is right here, I don't know what that is, but, uh, <laughs> uh, actually, it's a cool Death Star there, um, but, uh, but this is what I used to find the Milky Way as well, and the Milky Way is... Uh, down that direction right now, <laughs> but but yeah, I use it, I use this a good bit, and there's an iPhone version, and there's you know you have uh, what is it Google Sky has one, is it Google Sky is that what's called? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. It doesn't it doesn't quite have some of the features, but it, it all works pretty good. But I'll see if I can hunt down that the Android one I have while we while you're talking. Okay, great. So uh, um, so I think we've covered a good bit of the the basic settings. Um, I know for for my personal use, I, you know, I'm shooting at 2.8, so that makes it easiest. Obviously, the uh, the widest aperture possible. What are some other things um, that uh, that uh, you need to do uh, with your camera, Tommy? You got any you got any other tips on the camera well, side? No, I mean, uh, one thing that you know, I've read quite a bit about, uh, you know. Talking about uh, that, you and I kind of have this this 
discussion a while back about shooting wide open at 2A. Right, yeah. And I have, uh, you know, I've read quite a bit that uh, if you're shooting with a 2A lens to shoot at F4, that you'll get a cleaner, crisper uh, shot. I mean, you're going to have to jack your ISO up a little bit uh, when you do that, but that's just something I've read. I, you know, the uh, the image that I shot at Price Lake, it, it wasn't super clean, only because um, you know it wasn't used with the star tracker. But it was shot at f/4, and um, you know my ISO was it was pretty high. I mean, I think I may have been shooting at 32. That is high. something like that, but. Um, yeah, but, you know, I mean, so that's I mean that's the nature of all lens you know all lenses you start down a little yeah. bit and they get sharper yeah. so is that is that just you know standard you know the, you know standard lens physics or is that is there something special about stars that that makes that even I think a lot of your more zoom lenses have have more of that issue than a lot of your primes because uh, 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 and even like your off off market like my Tokina which is an outstanding lens very happy with it but at two way it gets soft on the edges. And a lot of the Nikons don't get quite as soft like the 14 and 24, which is you know an outstanding Nikon lens if you got a couple grand to drop on it. Uh, is is really sharp from edge to edge, but that's probably atypical for any kind of wide angle zoom. Right. And from what I've read, a lot of a lot of folks who ha who shoot wide open at 2A, uh, well at, at 2A are, are shooting the primes because the primes usually have better uh, um, you know uh, better image quality at that you know fixed focal length. Right. Yeah. Yeah, mine uh, that I posted on Google Plus did not look uh, as sharp as the uh, the image that you know I had, of course, on my computer. But I was fairly happy without, you know, shooting um, with a star tracker. I mean, if you zoom in, uh, it was surprisingly clean. Um, so you know, I, again, I'm, I'm hoping if we ever get a clear night up here to um, to get into something a little more, but. Um, but this time I'll do some tests, you know, at 2.8 and then maybe at f4 just to kind of see if there's any difference. So let's let's talk a little bit about finding uh, the right conditions to go out shooting because uh, that's like 99% of the battle, uh, especially for you, Tommy, lately, right? Dude, I mean, this is like a rainforest up here. I don't know what's going on. So what do you, you know, what do you use to track the the clouds? Because that's that's obviously you know, rain can't do much <laughs> about that, but but clouds you can. Uh, you can at least hope that they can dissipate and, and those kinds of things. Do you? Uh, I know you've got a special weather service up your way. Is there anything that you use when you're traveling, or or um, is weather.com your go-to? Yeah, I mean, I use uh, Wonderground. I use Intellicast. Um, I use uh, Ray's Weather, which is kind of a like you say, it's kind of a local thing. Um, here lately, it's like. <laughs> Partly cloudy means socked in for the most part. So you know, walking out, there's nothing quite uh, that matches walking out and looking up. <laughs> but uh, um, those are the ones that I primarily use. Um, I know you've got some pretty cool ones, Alistair, that you use. You turned me on to a couple, I think. Well, I, I really like the cloud cover percentage chart that Wonderground has. Unfortunately, right. they they don't have um, a, enough. Yeah, you know, they don't do it hourly. They do it every three hours, which isn't hourly, even though it says it's hourly. I don't quite understand that. Um, <laughs> but at least it gives you a percentage, so it'll say 50% or 30% or or whatever it says. Um, tonight is actually supposed to be 10% later this evening, so that might be uh, might be pretty good. Um, but yeah, so that's that's my primary um, for for cloud cover, uh, and then and then I use you know other other services just to bounce that off. Um, Josh, do you use anything different? Yeah, one, no, I use Wonderground. I mean, use I, Wonderground. Yeah. Okay. Peyton Harold got me onto that when we were at Zion uh, last year. And yeah, I, I, I wish they had a. That was great. I wish they had a better app. It's just they don't get that data on the app, unfortunately. Yeah. What do you use, Chuck? You use any anything like that? No, you've uh, opened my eyes when you told me the other day that uh, ten percent predicted for tonight and next Monday night is going to be twenty five percent. And I thought, how does he know this? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this isn't fair because I can't hear him. You guys are laughing. <laughs> I just told the world's greatest joke. <laughs> oh, this is great. Josh is just gonna be in the dark. <laughs> All right, so so the next most tricky thing is is you get out there. It's pitch black, right? 
um, and uh, you, you, there's no clouds, so you can see the stars, um, but uh, you you can't see anything else. You know, there's there's black black uh, silhouetted shapes, um, and uh, you know, framing becomes a, a, an issue, and focusing becomes an issue. Um, so let's let's talk through some of those how how to uh, resolve some of those issues. Um, who wants to take the first first stab? I'll go. Go for it. Okay. I mean, basically, you know, my approach here lately has been, uh, you know, any any structure that I have in the foreground, you you basically got two choices. Um, you use it as a silhouette, like a tree, or uh, or maybe even like a, uh, a fence line or something like that can can be good as a, a silhouette. Um, the other thing that I have done is I've gone to um, I went to uh, Walmart and bought a two million uh, candle power um, cubeine. It's got two settings. It's got a. Uh, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Sorry. All right. See you in a bit. It's basically got a half power and then a full power, and uh, and you know so your other choice is to basically light paint during a long exposure. You got that um, thing at Walmart? I got that thing at Walmart. Wow. Yeah. That's so, uh, yeah. So when you're, you know, when you're doing long exposure, um, and it, this this doesn't even it doesn't have to apply to star stuff, or or it can, but uh, you know, if you're photographing stars and you've got a barn in the foreground, you know, you can you can uh, stack multiple exposures. You can paint the barn in front of you. You can. Uh, run behind the barn and shoot it through the cracks in the barn. You can, um, you know, get inside of the barn and, and set your camera up so that it's taking um, continuous 15-second exposures, just one right after another. And it, it, while this is going on, you know, you run inside the barn and kind of light the interior up. Um, so, you know, lots of fun things can be done uh, with light painting. I like that. Thank yeah, that's, yeah. that's like good that. stuff. So, so when you when you're out there, do you take a test shot to uh, to to get your composition set up? Um, I do, and you you also have to uh, take some test exposures before you you um, you know whether, and a lot of it depends on what ISO you're using and the length of your exposure, how long you're going to be able to light paint in each image. You're going to have to know whether it's going to take one streak across. Or whether you're going to have to fire several little bursts um, <laughs> at your tree, or um, and you can paint like uh, some foreground, you know, in front of the barn, like it's reflecting off the barn onto the ground. Um, so uh, yes, the answer to your question is yes. You you definitely have to take some test exposures to uh, um, kind of find out how much light uh, you you can get away with painting. So so for me. Um you know, light painting is sort of a, a little an advanced sort of step. But I, what I, I like to do is I like to take a very high ISO shot right off the bat, get my composition lined up, uh, you know, and moving, move it around, etc. I have live view on my camera, so that helps out considerably, um, as long as the ISO goes up high enough on the live view. Uh, and then uh, um, fo focusing becomes the next super challenging thing because uh, you know focusing on the in on the dark is basically impossible for the camera to do so manual focus is is necessary um, you have any tricks uh, tricks for doing that Tommy um, you know, basically like you said uh, live view and uh, typically what I do is I'll pick the brightest star yeah. and I'll just zoom until that thing is like right dead center of my screen and then just manually focus until the haze kind of you know minimizes and typically, that's as that's as good as it's going to get. So, if you don't have live view on your camera, what what can you do? I mean, what are the what are options do you have? Well, that certainly makes things a little more difficult. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, it really about the best thing that you can do is look through your viewfinder and zoom in as much as you can. Um, and uh, um, you know, try to try to focus that way on your brightest star. The other thing that you can do is on a bright day, um, you know, set your camera up on a tripod, and on Nikon lenses, you know, 
turning it all the way to infinity does not necessarily mean you're going to focus to infinity. So one thing to do in the light is to try to find where on your lens is infinity. And, uh, and so just kind of make a mental note that, you know, I'm all the way to the right and then back just a little bit. And if, if worse comes to worst, you know, you just try to hit that as close as you possibly can. The third way is to take some test shots and then zoom in to see if you're in focus or not, um, and then try to keep adjusting to until you get it. Yeah, one of the worst things to do is to to be out of focus, not know it, and take all your shots out of focus and then come back and. Uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you I'd like to hope. say that's never happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not in this, not in this hemisphere. Better or worse than. Uh, <laughs> not in this hemisphere. <laughs> Then forgetting to put the warning uh, that you don't have the other card. So no, Josh, I mean, on the Canon on the Canon lenses, you you shot Canon in the past. It's the same thing, right? The same, uh, yeah, not quite same. all the way to infinity. Yeah, yeah. I, I, infinity is a good concept to have a little infinity marker. Some of the lenses, like my Tahina, actually have a little the little infinity symbol uh, mm -hmm. on there. Uh, but I found it's, it's never actually that. It's usually back a little bit. Right. Uh, so uh, on most of my lenses, I just know where infinity really is. Uh, and it's like, it's, you know, sometimes I won't even use live, like, I'll set up for live view a little bit, but even that, it gets a little bit difficult at times. So a lot of times, uh, I actually, even even though I do have live view, I'll do test shots. I'll bump up my ISO to something crazy high, even though I know I'll never use that shot. <laughs> I'll bump it up to something crazy high, get everything, make sure it's framed in, because the other annoying thing is that, it, you know, it, it is it's... It's hard to look at the corners, even in those high ISO shots, and I usually zoom in the corners, and because you might have like a, you know, this picturesque rocky outcropping, and you're cutting off some key part of it that you can't really tell you are until you do your post processing. So right. I just bump up my ISO to some crazy high, like 128, you know, like you know, 12,800 12, or something, and it's crazy messy, but you can see what's framed in, and then I just lock in my tripod and and fire away. So the uh, the heavier the tripod, the better in situations like this, right? Yeah, I was going to mention that a little bit earlier. Is the uh, uh, stable tripod, obviously, especially you know for for stuff Tommy's doing with the longer exposure, but uh, yeah, you know six minute exposure and stuff. But some of the tripods are nice. Like I don't have this, but some of the tripods actually have a little hook if they have a center the, the center leg. I think is that what you call it, the center leg. But oh. they, they, some of them have a lot of a little hook, and you can actually stabilize it by putting some uh, uh, hanging your back camera bag or something on it. Yeah, or sandbags on the bottom uh, work too. Yeah, so um, so that's one issue with the with the longer exposures. If if uh, you know a little bit of wind or something bumps your tripod or or whatever, an animal, a bird, a you, uh, photographer. another photographer, yeah. anything, you know, and you're 40 minutes into your exposure, and at the 41st minute somebody bumps it, you know, it's all gone. <laughs> so that's that's a key advantage to shooting, uh, you know, a series of 30 second or 25 second or whatever whatever second exposures, um, and then blending them together. Um, so, th you know, that's that's the route I prefer. Not that I've done a whole bunch of those, but but that's the route I, w I would be using personally. Um, do you, have you have you stacked, you guys stacked any of those those uh, images together before? Done any star stacks or anything like that? I, I tried to quite a while back, and... I think I was actually having, when I first got a D800, I was trying some star trails, and what, you know, what Tommy was mentioning is stitch them all together, and you get the, and I was actually running into, uh, get the star trail. Uh, system limitations, because <laughs> I was, I was trying to load it up, you know, in Adobe Bridge, you go in and load up all his layers, and, and do the magic, and, and, and my Mac would actually just kind of come to a grinding halt and just sit there and die. Uh, so, I, it doesn't help that you have, like, you know, you're trying to combine several, you know, a few dozen, uh, you know, 35 megabyte files, <laughs> you know, as 150 layers. <laughs> uh, but right. uh, I kind of I punted after that. Those 16 gigs of RAM were not cutting it, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> and it's sad because 16 gigs of RAM is actually, you know, fairly hefty. It does a it does a great job on my normal processing. But oh, I was just I was just guessing at your at yeah. your. No, I'd love right. to get 32 gigs. Yeah, wouldn't we all? So uh, um, back to, to finding the location, um, that's, you know, the, again, the hardest part. Uh, and finding that dark sky is, is pretty much the, the, the hardest part, especially where, where we live, Chuck. Did uh, you mention uh, while I was gone the dark sky finder?
No, that's what we were about to about to. So that's a that's a good one. Um, I was blown away with that when you sent that link to me. I looked at it and said that is the darkest place in the area, <laughs> middle of the national. Oh, did I did I chop? Did... Can you can you hear him yet, Josh? Is he still muted for you? Oh yeah, I can't hear him. Sorry, was he talking? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, Chuck. Read my lips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so talk a little bit about Dark Sky Finder, if you will, Josh. Oh, sorry. No, I, I didn't know if it was got brought up while I was gone. I had a kid wake up. She was crying at the door. <laughs> oh, uh, so, uh, no, Dark Sky Finder is a tool I use, especially here. Uh, you know, you don't have to worry about it as much when you're on the West Coast or someplace in the Midwest when you know you're in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and, and, and But uh, but around here, especially on these coasts, you, know, you, you don't have a, a lot of non-light-polluted uh, areas. So... Uh, there's a, I, I know there's a, there's I think there's a couple of Android apps and a couple of iPhone apps and but there's actually a site I go to uh, um, and uh, it's actually a, a, oh, if you just do a Google search for Dark Sky Finder it comes up it's some guy's personal site but it's a yeah, Google Map overlay uh, and it will actually it does an overlay of uh, light pollution against a map. And so it's color coded with uh, with white and red being the worst, and green and you know light blue being less light pollution till you know till there's almost none. Obviously, the darker colors are better. Uh, and you can actually hunt down uh, some areas that uh, that have a little bit less light pollution than other areas. Uh, especially uh, you know here in here in the uh, in North Carolina, I was actually surprised that there actually are a few spots nearby that have relatively less light pollution than other spots. Uh, Outer Banks being one of them, uh, but uh, uh, but and that's what I used to try to. I mean, that's what I was actually using just uh, earlier today when I was uh, uh, trying to decide where to go for the meteor showers. Yeah, so I've heard that 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 Dark Sky Finder app, the uh, J Shine. Yeah, uh, J Shine. Yeah. I, I've heard that it uses uh, population densities uh, in order to to generate that map, um, which would be mostly accurate. Um, but at times there's going to be issues with that. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess if you're in the middle of nowhere and there's like a military base or something, or you know, a, a random thing like that. Uh, I, I honestly, I'm not sure what it uses. That that probably. Uh, it would make sense. That's how I would build it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I I just kind of assumed there was some, you know, some study done someplace on on you know with a map and geographic coordinates for light pollution. He just overlaid it, but. Uh, so there's another another site that I found today that has um, by state it has uh, viewing sites all all over the state and I'm trying to pull it, I was trying to find it right now um, I can't find it right now but I'll find it in a minute uh, anyway it has it has a uh, 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 viewing sites all across the state and then it charts them out it maps them out and color codes them every day um, and every hour for every, for the next three days when you know when the best conditions are going to be and it does. Uh, temperature, it does cloud cover, it, it does uh, uh, light pollution, um, and, and several other key f key factors. Um, yeah, I'd love it, to have that site. I haven't, haven't seen that before. It, it's a little bit, you know, more difficult to read. It's not the most uh, elegant interface, but but once you've figured it out, it's it's very straightforward. And I'll I'll put I'll put the link in um, after the show because hey, it. Yeah. I got, got a question. I remember seeing your picture of the Milky Way. That I think you took at Folly Beach. Yeah, that's right. Two, three in the morning, four o'clock in the morning, or something. Right. Yeah. How did that look on your uh, on your map of showing? Was that a dark spot? Yeah. So if you look if you look at the dark sky finder, all of the sea is not mapped at all. There's no color coding on in the sea. So when you're at the beach, especially, and you're looking, you know, the Milky Way rises in the east, um, and you're looking out to sea. There's there's basically no light pollution out to sea at all. It's it's dark, dark, dark. Um, you will get some you know light pollution from behind you from the city, um, but in certain in certain locations like the end of Folly Beach, it's it's really pretty good down that way. Um, and uh, you know that that night I had some light pollution from the construction crews that were working on ah, on rebu rebuilding the uh, the county the park there. Nourishing, yeah. That's right. Yeah, so that was that was uh, shooting out to sea is excellent. Um, now, will that work for us for the meteor shower? 
No, the problem with the meteor shower, well, I mean, it would work. The meteors are going to be all over the sky, but they they basically originate from the Perseus constellation, and I think that's how you pronounce pronounce that. I do. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, and that that is in the northern section of the Milky Way, um, and it actually it actually rises. Uh, right after the Milky Way rises, I believe. I'll have to look at a map to make <laughs> sure. But, but basically, all the all the meteors originate from that location and will shoot out, you know, all over the sky. Um, and so it's it's probably best for us to be viewing north, you know, towards the north, uh, at least the northern half of the sky. And if we're out at the beach, we'll be mostly shooting west, east to southeast, um, mm -hmm. where the darkest portion of the sky is, um, and it won't be quite as Quite as clear, so I, you know, I suggested we we go up to uh, um, to Francis Marion National Park where there's there's nothing up there at all, okay. uh, and uh, and shoot north from there. Um, so we'll, we can we can see how that'll how that'll go. I interrupted your agenda. Pardon me. Oh uh, no worries. I I don't really have an agenda. I'm just I just have some talking points. You know, uh, I'll, I'll I'll add something real quick to that. Yeah, go is, for it. Uh, <clears throat> You know, depending on the amount of the light pollution that you've got, you can actually work that to your benefit. Um, uh, and again, I wish I could bring that shot up, but um, but if you the, if you've got it there, you can hit the screen share button. Um, I'll look for it here in a second. But the, okay. the, just real quick, uh, you know, as uh, it was kind of a fluke that I was able to get this, but it's uh, the the night that I was out. Uh, we had some low-lying kind of wispies. You know, there wasn't it wasn't major. Matter of fact, you you couldn't even see it in the sky. It looked perfectly clear. Um, but and the direction that I was shooting was towards Blowing Rock, which is, you know I'm sure y'all know is it's a very small town. Probably got a few street lights. So it wasn't uh, wasn't anything major like the, the town. You know, like a Charleston or, or suburbs there. But um, there we go. There you go. So, uh, so you can see that uh, that uh, um, I was able to pick up some of the uh, incandescent uh, color tones in some of the lower clouds uh, in something like that, and uh, and you know I think it was it was just kind of something different. I actually had somebody comment on that image and say, "I didn't know you could see the Milky Way at sunset." <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, but you know, it's just, it's just, again, it's just something a little different. Yeah, no, it's very cool. Um, so, so you know, the only issue with with any kind of light pollution is it it cuts down the visibility for for the stars. Right. It'll, it'll cut down the Milky Way some. That's right. It will. Um, but it, it, you know, in this case, it it's it's gorgeous. It's, it's beautiful colors. Yeah, just something something a little different, you know. Yeah, very cool. Um, so uh, let me unscreen share that. Uh, there we go. Um, so, so one other point that I that I did have is um, is uh, you know we talked about warmer and, and cooler <laughs> shooting a little bit earlier, um, and there's some there's some you know tricky things you have to make sure you take care of when you're shooting in, in different conditions. Um, when it's warmer, it's obviously more humid. Well. In our part of the world, it's very much more humid. Uh, and when it's uh, when it's cooler, um, it's it's drier. Uh, and so, the biggest challenge is moving from a dry, humid or dry, uh, um, w uh, warm environment to a humid, other way around, uh, from humidity to to dryness, and from dryness to humidity, and shooting longer exposures outside when the night sky is cooling, um, and you you end up. With the uh, the problem of dew on your lens, um, so uh, who wants to take uh, take a stab at how they take care of Tommy? You want to start us off on on what you do to combat the dew, especially. You know, I haven't uh, I haven't had an issue with that yet, um, but some of the uh, literature that I've, in fact, uh, in the Polari um, manual, which I <laughs> I've now read. <laughs> um, did say, uh, and, and I've heard a lot of people say this too, and Alex, for you and I kind of talked about this, but uh, little heat pack hand warmers. Yeah. 
can be strapped uh, around the lens. I think the, the disadvantage there is, you know, if you need to work your focus ring or, you know, there's always a chance that uh, that could have some effect there. But, it, you know, to keep your lens warm and keep that from uh, happening and, of course, lens hoods uh, help in, in with that kind of thing. But I haven't run into that yet. I'm sure I will. Um, well, if you start point. shooting your longer, you know, star tracker shots, I'm sure it's, you know, especially in the in the colder months up there, you're going to... Absolutely. Yeah. Coming. I just I haven't... Read, I read it. someone not too long ago. I, I, I read that uh, it was in some blog post. I wish I remember where it was. But they actually put those hand warmers in a sock, and they wrapped the sock around the lens, and that way they could just untie the sock when they wanted to mess with something. Hmm. Good idea. I'm sure there's some very expensive device that can do the same thing. <laughs> yeah, there there is absolutely. <laughs> yeah, they make all kinds of things. So what about um, what about bringing that gear? Let's say let's say you're out shooting in the cold and you you bring it back inside. You got any tricks for making sure that the you know that the moisture doesn't doesn't get inside the lenses and whatnot when you bring it into the hot environment? I usually just leave it in the bag as long as possible. So you yeah. leave it in your bag and you, you bring your bag straight inside or you leave it outside? It, and You know, I have a garage, so I'll usually actually keep leave it in the garage, garage in the back seat because it, it'll slowly warm up. And then if you keep if you bring it in the house a little bit, you know, after that, then it, it'll uh, typically, your bag will actually stay a little bit colder too. Yeah. And so the whole thing just kind of takes a while to warm up. But And the reverse is true. Like, you know, we ran into, you know, we don't run, the, I, don't, I typically when I'm going to shoot in the morning, I don't run the AC in the car in the hot morning. Right. Like you know, you get the nice condensation that takes a good 15, 20 minutes to go away. Yeah, absolutely. So we don't have to worry too much about the cold here, but but uh, when you travel, when you're in Rainier or, or Acadia in the winter months, you're going to end up with uh, or Colorado or Alaska or wherever you wherever you end up. Um, the uh, you know, there's there's definitely an issue going into hot hot spaces. Don't forget about your battery too. You want to keep your batteries a little bit warmer if you're really cold outside because it'll drain your lithium ions faster. Yeah, that's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spare batteries. True. All right. Absolutely. Any any other tips or or, or anything on that front? All right. Good. Chuck, Chuck, what uh, what questions you got? Uh, we've covered a lot of material already. You really have, and I appreciate letting me sit in. Um, the other guys don't realize, I, I was a newspaper photographer, I was a Marine Corps photographer, I carried a large 4x5 speed graphics. Um, I guess as a reaction to that, now that I'm retired, I have a couple of point-and-shoot cameras. That's all I carry. I don't, have, I don't have any prime lenses, I don't have anything that you guys have been talking about, but I've been extremely pleased with what I can get with my point-and-shoot. I've got the uh, the Canon S90, a, a 2.0 lens. Yeah. Uh, not much of a zoom, but then I also bought a, a 260 Canon with a 20 times zoom. So I've got a 25 to 500 millimeter approximately, and those are the tools I'm working with. But I'm limited. I can only do a 15 second exposure. Am I out of this game completely? Yeah, so the 15 minute exposures or the 15 second, 15 second, right? Yeah. So you know you, the the problem is your focal length. 15 seconds, you're gonna get you're gonna get star rotations probably. Um, we can we can do the math on that, but it's gonna get cl pretty close. Um, you're you're gonna end up the w the only way to do it is to is to bump the ISO way up, uh, and uh, you're gonna end up with a good bit of noise in your in your shots, uh, and then you know it's gonna come down to how you know how good does the camera handle the noise, and and how uh, how good are you at getting rid of it in post, um, or how good's the software in, in getting rid of it? Um, and any other thoughts, guys, on that? What uh, what was his question? Oh yeah, sorry, Josh. <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> that is so weird. I wonder why yeah, it's doing. I can hear everybody else, just not him. So he's he's got two point and shoot cameras. Um, the S nine Canon S ninety. Uh, which is a uh, two two o oh, um, twenty. What was it? Twenty eight. Uh, that's a twenty eight millimeter. Yes. Twenty eight millimeter at the widest. Um, that's that's the thirty five millimeter equivalent. Uh, right. And the thirty uh, the two sixty uh, the zoom lens is a twenty five millimeter. 
Right, 25 it's millimeter. It's three but it's a 3.5. Yeah. So, uh, so I think, I, I think he, I think you, you'll be able to get some, some stuff for sure. Um, With how, how high, how high does the uh, ISO go? Um, those cameras. 32, I think, but I can put it on automatic or something. I, I know I can go higher than 32. I think I go 64. Yeah, and they both have manual, full manual control, right? Correct. Yeah. I'm looking at this right now. Hopefully, I'm not over talking him. <laughs> uh, I'm looking <laughs> at the end right now. One thing uh, that we we hadn't mentioned that I think a lot of us uh, take uh, for granted is uh, shooting in raw. So it looks like um, you know a lot of times by default a lot of these cameras are going to be shooting in JPEG. It looks, I'm just looking at the PowerShot S90 and it can shoot in raw. So uh, a lot of times you can recover, uh, even though it may not look great when you first pull it off. Uh, and uh, but if you shoot in raw, you maybe will recover something out of it a little bit more than you think. Thank you. That, that's a good comment. I hadn't thought about that. Well, the nice thing about shooting in, in raw, so that's weird. So you can hear Josh no problem, but he yes, can't hear you. Yeah, I can't hear. And, and so he's he not, said thank you, by the way. Uh, yeah, he's not muted <laughs> at all. I, mean, I, 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 I actually I, I flicked the little switch here. To see the, here, I'm actually going to mute him now. Maybe you can, I can hear him. You did. Mute. You did mute him. <laughs> <laughs> see, he, we can't hear him either if you mute him. Oh, really? Yeah, you muted oh. for everybody. Oh, wow, okay. You better not do that. <laughs> And I'll tell you something uh, Something else, Chuck, is, uh, you know, it, that wouldn't stop me at all. Um, you know, because uh, part of it is, is learning how to, to actually do it. You know, I mean, yes, it's going to take some work, and, and you may not get an image that you can blow up and put on the wall, but you can certainly go out in the backyard, and you can practice um, honing your, your skills in doing such a thing. Uh, for example... Um, focusing, finding a focal point, that's, that's a huge issue. Um, you know, that is something that you don't think is going to be that big of an issue until you get out there in the dark. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, it's an issue. So, you know, to practice doing something like that and then uh, just do some long exposures at some different ISO ratings and, you know, just open your lens up <laughs> all the way. And, you know, I can tell you what will most likely happen is what happens to all of us is the bug will actually bite you. You know, it's going to get you. <laughs> yeah. you get just close <laughs> enough that you're like, oh, okay. But <laughs> where I was going with that is that, you know, you can, uh, you can rent camera bodies and you can rent camera lenses for not that much. And so, you know, if you get to the point where you feel like you've got it dialed in, you know, for – for not really that much, you could rent a, uh, a camera body that would allow you to um, use an ISO range that would certainly be suitable to get star photography and, and a lens that would also um, match that. And, and, you know, by this time, you'll have your spots picked out. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe shoot with somebody like Alistair and have some spots picked out that you when you do your rental, You'll know exactly where to go, exactly what functions and what ISOs to use, and then then you'll have everything dialed in, and, and you'll get some wall mounts at that point. And um, you know, that's I would certainly go out and give it a stab. Absolutely. Well, I tell you, for something like this this meteor shower that we're about to witness, you you don't even need to go out and shoot. You can just go out and watch it because it's going to be it's going to be fantastic. Absolutely. You know? um, Shooting it is fun, and and uh, you know, trying to capture it is is also part of the fun. Um, but but it is it it'll be it'll be a show for sure. You well, know, Allison, uh, you you reminded me that years ago I took my kids out. We laid out on a blanket and watched the media shower, and I learned you can't say look at that because it's gone. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, it's pretty fast. You just got to look at a region of the sky right. and then just watch them go. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I think I think uh, you know, 15 seconds. It's going to be you know, it's going to be close. Gonna be close. And, uh, and uh, you'll uh, you'll sorry, I'm getting a lot of feedback. feedback. Um, you'll have you'll to, have to uh, 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 play with that ISO, ISO quite, a, quite bit. a bit. Well, it sounds like my my, my parameters are going to be uh, 2.0, uh, 15 seconds, and then play with the ISO. Make that the variable. Yeah. Yeah. Let me Let check, me check the, the, Five hundred about twenty eight, right? right? Seventeen, 17 seconds. seconds. So fifteen, so 15 will, be will be perfect. Excellent. Okay, I'm encouraged. Thank you. 
All right, All right very good. good. Okay, so, okay, so Tommy, Tommy, let's, let's talk, talk about, about favorite, favorite places, places to go. To go. Do you, do you want to give just, just one place that you really, really would like to go, go shoot uh, uh, Star Stars? Um, I'm, I'm trying, trying to, to understand. understand. Anybody, Anybody else got this crazy, crazy echo? echo? No, I don't know. I've got pretty good audio, actually, except for a <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've, I've got a massive double sound down on here. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm getting your echo now, yeah. It's terrible. It's terrible. Somebody's, somebody's, somebody's got, got their got speakers too close to the microphone. microphone. It will do. It will mute. Did that Did work? That work? Nope. 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 Let's try, Let's this, try one. this one. Did that work? Did that work? Nope. Nope. Did this work? Yes. Okay. So it's Chuck. Chuck, it's your microphone. It's too close to the speakers. Okay. Or your speakers are turned too too high. All right. Can can you hear us? No echo. Good. Tommy, can you hear me? Can you hear me, Tommy? Over. I can't. I can't hear him. Josh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, because I'm still showing on the Google Hangout UI as being muted. <laughs> you are. It still says you are muted. <laughs> it does. My goodness. Uh, Chuck is muted for me. I just muted him. No, I unmuted him. It still says he's muted. <laughs> okay, now, now he's now unmuted. He's okay, good. good. But you're but back, you're to, back being to being echo. echo. I'm the echo guy. Huh? Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's see right, if Tommy, Tommy comes back, back this time. time. Tommy, you're Tommy, back. back. Nope. Nope. <laughs> All right, Josh. I guess you and I will just uh, we'll just talk, and they can just you know make uh, fancy uh, uh, hand motions or something. Did uh, did you have a uh, um, you have a favorite place uh, that you go close to your house there? Uh, really not close to my house. I got I have uh, uh, <laughs> it's warning that I'm muted. <laughs> Yeah, I'm trying. I'm getting pop-ups on my screen saying you're muted. Are you trying to talk? Yeah, keep uh, going. You're fine. Okay. Uh, you know, honestly, uh, uh, not locally. Just there's so much light pollution. I've tried it a few times, uh, and, and it's just crazy amounts of light pollution. I'm only, uh, you know, 10 minutes, 15 minutes from Raleigh here, uh, uh, and as I drive around me, I start hitting other communities. So, uh, you know, Fayetteville of the South, and you know, just carry the carry. You know, it's just everything's everywhere. So. Uh, I honestly, I, I like to go out to uh, either coast uh, mm -hmm. or out to um, uh, out to Tommy's neck of the woods. Uh, okay. Just because there's just you know that, that that's the biggest factor is the light pollution. You just get so much glow on the horizon that it just it reaches up into the sky and and you can recover some of that and you know but uh, but not too much. So I, I I typically do it when I'm out of town. My favorite spot to actually do uh, star photography was out in Zion. Zion was fabulous. You get some yes. nice, nice, distinct lines in the sky, and you don't have to play any games and processing, and nice dark skies. So, so I'm gonna pull up that dark sky finder real quick and share and share it because. Uh, um, yeah, you'll see is, North Carolina is pretty bad. Yeah, <laughs> North Carolina is gonna be awful, I'm sure. And and, that, and you know the thing is, is you think all oh, the mountains of West Virginia, all that kind of stuff, they're actually not that great either. There's so much from DC and everything else. So here we go. Okay, so you can see, I'm going to make this a little smaller, see if this works. That's a bit better. Yeah, so so the whole East Coast is, is, a, is a problem. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can shoot out to sea, um, and there's some in, in West Virginia, like you said. Um, the Outer Banks was perfect, man, when, when, while we were out there. It was, that's the best on the East Coast, uh, you know, pretty much everywhere. Um, and then once you get out west, just about anywhere is perfect. Um, so, so the elevation makes a big difference uh, to uh, to uh, reducing the haze and and showing the you know increased clarity in the stars. 
Um, so some of the mountains up in you know in Colorado and and in California and Utah, if, east coast of California or the east side of California, um, can can really be excellent. Um, and I, I had a great time when I was out there shoot, shooting there and, and just watching the stars. Um, let's see if we can get Tommy back. Tommy, you back? Hmm. No. It, he's not even trying to say anything. <laughs> Maybe he muted himself. There we go. Yeah. Sweet. <laughs> All right, tell me what you got. You got a favorite location uh, that you like to go? I know you've got a bunch up there. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, there's a couple that I'm I'm after, and I have been after for quite some time. But um, you know, I, I want some with uh, Grandfather Mountain in the background. One problem that we have here is that uh, even though we don't have, you know, there's the the mountain towns are fairly small. But one thing that we do have is these unbelievable street lights. I mean, they're like, they're just unreal. And, and I mean, to do a long exposure with these things is uh, it's just not even doable. Um, so when you're shooting from up high, uh, you see a lot of these, uh, these street lamps, I, I guess is what they are, but um, they're super bright. So... Some of the newer stuff that, that I'm looking to do is actually down where, you know, you're actually looking up towards like a mountain like Grandfather or Rich Mountain or something like that, um, as opposed to looking down to where you see the long range views because you get so much light pollution because we can see, you know, basically all the way to Charlotte um, from up here when you're doing that type of thing. So. Uh, here in the mountains, that's something that I've, I've been attempting to do. I just, we just haven't had the weather to do it yet. Yeah, very good. Chuck, are you, uh, let's see if you, we can hear you. I think so. No? Nope. Hold on. Okay, what about now? <laughs> we can't hear you. I can't tell if it says, it says I mute him. Both times oh. I click it. Try now. Oh, oh I, I heard you for a second. There we go. There we go. Okay, are we both clicking the buttons? Is, is that, that what's going on? Yeah, that must yeah, be it. Okay, go can you it. hear me now? Is it better? No echo? No. Well, it's no, echo for us, for us but, if, but when you when talk, you there's talk, no there's echo. echo. Well, of course, Josh can't hear me anyway, so... <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so, so where is the, uh, the best uh, place you've seen stars, 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 or where would you like to shoot, shoot the most? The most. Um, you're asking me. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I'm I'm totally out of this conversation. I uh, I've gone out for a night of uh, light light shooting, uh, night lights and. Um, I, I learned that a flashlight is amazing when you when you're doing a long exposure, but uh, as far as the rest of the conversation, I'll just listen. Go ahead and mute me so I don't screw up your sound. <laughs> well, um, I think I think we'll try to find some places around here. The beach is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, and uh, you know, you know, I, I prefer getting up the mountains and getting some elevation. Uh, in order to uh, um, get close to the stars, right? So that's that's my goal um, when I go out shooting. Colorado was excellent. Um, I know that uh, Alaska. Um, I've been in Alaska, and that was just incredible. Um, there's basically no light pollution once you get outside of the cities there. Um, so I didn't know if uh, if you guys had any images that you wanted to share. Josh, did you have anything prepared for that? Uh, yeah. I mean, I can show. I can show the most recent one that we just took uh, from last weekend uh, that turned out fairly well. Yeah, go for it. So if you want me, I've never shared anything uh, through Google. You just okay, hit the share so. button, um, and then uh, you find you find the uh, don't do full screen. Uh, just just find the the application window that you that you want to share. Uh, and Tommy, if you want to get prepared with something, um, it can be your own or, or somebody else's that you that you really like. Uh, okay, how does it tell you? Okay, so I hit the uh, screen share on the left-hand side, right? Sorry, I got it. Yes. Yeah, I hit the screen share on the left-hand side. Mm. 
and then then you you find the window that you've got your uh, what you want to share. I think because I'm listed as muted, it's not letting me. It won't let you screen share. Uh, you want... Yeah, it's not letting me. You want to share that 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 image from today? I'll I'll pull it up real quick. Post processing, just so if you want to if you want to pull it up. Um, yeah, I can pull it up. You don't have the pretty shot, but. No, I don't. Yeah, for some reason I'm still listed as muted, so I, I have a feeling that's. Oh wait, hold on a second here. Oh, it just went away. Did you do something? Uh, no, I didn't do anything. I just I'm sharing your your image from. Huh. Can you see it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, okay. it's my 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 little mute message went away, but it uh, <laughs> I still can't screen share though. Um, anyway, uh, so um, real quick on the, on the technical side of this the shot, uh, this was uh, at 16 to 28. So I did I shot this at 16. Uh, the ISO I think was uh, I, mean, I think it was like 2400, 2500. Let me look here real quick. Uh, yeah, 2500. Uh, and this is a 25 second exposure. Uh, I didn't have my remote shutter release, and I think what 25 seconds the max, and then the 800, isn't it? Uh, uh, 30. Is it 30? Okay. Maybe I bumped it back down to 25. I can't quite remember, but um, and uh, so uh, uh, obviously there, there was a good bit of cleanup on here. Uh, so I, I did denoise it in Lightroom, uh, and uh, I did also mess a little bit with the levels in Lightroom to add some contrast uh, to initially start pulling out some things, uh, and then uh, I immediately popped it into Photoshop. And typically, what my processing is on these guys. Um, I have done luminosity masks at times uh, with this, but on this particular shot, I actually kind of f fell back on how I previously processed photos, and that's basically a lot of a lot of masking and uh, and, and and levels. And so what I'll, what I'll do is uh, the first thing is I I take the foreground out because a lot of times when you're playing with sliders and everything, you 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 want the sky to be adjusted separately in the foreground. And so uh, I, I immediately masked out the foreground, uh, and I did a little cleanup in there. There was, I think, there was a little helicopter at low level. I had some interesting little lights <laughs> that I had to that I didn't notice at first. That I had to clean out. Uh, you know, I, while we were out there, I noticed a few shooting stars. Yeah, you know, at one of my other shots I actually had a couple shooting stars, and then the they, they it did not turn out as well. I would have liked to use it, uh, um, but uh, uh, um, but anyway, yeah. So. Uh, um, so I masked out the foreground and I, I processed that separately. I just did very minimal processing in the foreground. It was already pretty dark. I just kind of cleaned up a few things. Uh, and but most of my time is spent on the on the rest of the picture. And so what I'll do is I'll immediately mess with the levels a little bit and make it pop a little bit more. Uh, uh, and typically what I'll do is I'll, I'll pick up a uh, when you're messing with levels, you have a little you have in Photoshop you have a little uh, little pointer button. I don't know what the proper name for it is, but you can make selections. Of, of different uh, colors or different spots in the photograph, and then you oh, can adjust the, your levels from that spot. The little dropper. The yeah, little dropper guy, yeah. Yeah. Um, and and that allows you to not go too crazy on the levels. A lot of times, also when you're first adjusting levels, uh, there's the RGB, but you can also jump into a specific color. And and a lot of times, you know, a lot of my photographs, especially with the high ISO, will will be you know have that reddish hue to it. Uh, and I personally like more of the the blue. I don't I like some colors inside the Milky Way itself, but I like more of a blue. Uh, so I will uh, adjust the levels of the blue as well. Uh, maybe tone down the reds a little bit and so on and so forth. Uh, and then actually what I what, what I do is I, I, I pull out the, the brush, I uh, create another mask, and then I, I and then I uh, I get just the stretch of the uh, of, of the Milky Way. So that I can adjust the Milky Way, and I use the brush, and then I add a, uh, I add a, a blur, a Gaussian. Gaussian is that how you pronounce it? Gaussian. Ga I say Gaussian. Gaussian. Okay. It might just be me. Yeah, I, I have not pronounced it. I know. <laughs> I know what the button is. Uh, uh, so the Gaussian blur, uh, uh, so that it doesn't have the fine detail. I actually pop the Gaussian blur really up high, 
uh, so there, there, there's not a distinctive line anywhere. And then I'll actually play a little bit more with the levels, and that's what makes, if you see the picture, that's what makes the Milky Way really pop. I'm not adding any colors to it. I'm not really, it, this, this is all levels. Uh, um, and, then, and then lastly, uh, I will additionally take in another mask, and, and I've done it in this photograph as well. If you notice, I don't have a, there was a lot of light pollution uh, around coming from the, from the right. I think that was from where, I don't know what it was from, but it wasn't the lighthouse, but there was a bunch of light pollution. I'll add another mask in there, and I also had some clouds in there, and the clouds had this awful hue to it, so I kind of toned it down a little bit. The clouds looked like a bright, bright fluorescent red. It was just the glow was coming weird off the clouds. So I masked that in a little more and played with the level. So really my, my approach to this is, is a lot of masking and a lot of uh, uh, playing with the levels to get the contrast and get the colors to make them really pop like it is here. A lot of folks, when I first got into this, you know, I thought people were doing a lot of Photoshopping to, to, to get this, but it, I wish I could share the, the original. It's all there, especially if you're shooting in RAW. It's all there. It's just that uh, uh, you just kind of have to work it out a little bit. But, uh, but all in all, this, is, this took me probably 20 minutes of process, maybe 25 minutes at the most. It came out great. It looks, it looks really nice. Um, thanks. Very cool. And thanks for the tent. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a great image, Josh. Thank you. Yeah, that's Alistair's tent and, and, uh, and my, my – uh, uh, oh, by the way, if you're going for the glow like that, I just I know a lot of people have, like, gels they put on their, on their flashlights, and if you've invested in that, that's awesome. Uh, uh, I haven't invested in any of that. So I actually, uh, we used uh, my phone. My phone has a little flashlight app, and the app has different color settings you can put so the screen glows a particular color. I just picked a different color and tossed it in there, and you got that nice glow, and it was less harsh than a uh, than a than uh, an actual like, headlamp or flashlight in there. Yeah, the flash would have been, you know, would have been two-directional. You know, it wouldn't, it wouldn't have uh, gone in all directions like your, your, your uh, cell phone did. But this so is pretty, I'm hoping somebody, you know, somebody picks up for a magazine cover and I can buy a lens. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is great detail in that, though, man. I mean, that's, uh, that's, that's really nice. I like that a lot. Thanks, thanks. I actually ended up like, I thought I was really disappointed by some of the clouds that were pouring in. And you can't really tell, but there's actually a good bit of clouds to the right. That's why the stars aren't as intense to the right mm -hmm. and to the bottom. But I actually kind of liked a little bit of a couple little clouds in the bottom. Yeah, yeah it's it, cool. It gives it some, uh, you know, some, some extra dimension there. What, what ISO were you at here? Uh, 2,500. 25, okay. And you say that was... 25 seconds wide 25 open. Seconds. Yeah, I could have gone. I probably could have dropped the ISO a little bit and gone another four seconds, but we were just kind of messing around in the. Uh, uh, and, and and I wasn't like I said, I can't do math in my head. <laughs> uh, but uh, but yeah yeah. It, 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 if you, I wish I could show you the. I keep on saying that, but I wish I could show you the. Uh, the before. The before. I actually had three set up. I had the the original. The Lightroom and then the Photoshop one, so you can kind of. See we'll try it. try share it again, and and uh, um, we'll see 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 what you can do. And and uh, Tommy, are you ready to go with with something? I got nothing, man. I had to shut Photoshop down; it froze on me. All right. Well, you uh, you already showed your your image before. Do you want to talk about how you process that? Okie dokie. Hold on a second. Let me see if I can find your image now. I mean, it's uh. <laughs> It's pretty simple, you know, on that. It's, um, you know, I did basically the same thing Josh did. It's, uh, <clears throat> it's uh, I didn't get quite the clarity that he did simply because of the light pollution there. Um, but the approach that I took to, like in the original image in Lightroom, you could not see the Milky Way. Matter of fact, when I got back, I was like, uh, I wasn't able to catch it. Um, but using uh, levels um, and just very subtle like layer after layer um, of levels and then I also used uh, luminosity and kind of painted along that area masking uh, like Josh was saying um, I was able to retrieve um, enough detail to to give a hint of the Milky Way back there and um, you know, I think that's that's really as good as that image is going to get. Um, 
you know, uh, unless you've got a dark, dark sky, I don't think you're going to find the kind of detail um, that Josh was able to find, which I think that was just incredible. I mean, that was beautiful. But that, uh, that basically really works, though, man. I, I love, I love that glow from the horizon blending into the sky, man. That it's just, I think it's a fabulous shot. Yeah, well, I appreciate it. I think, I think the only reason um, that that glow in the sky works is because it had water right under it. I think if if it would have been all dark down yeah. low, yeah, um, I agree with that. Yeah, it's. I don't think it would have worked as well. But the fact that there was a lake to kind of pick that reflection up. I think it works a little better. Um, if if it would have been a um, a darker foreground, um, I would have preferred something more like what you got. You know, where the impact of the Milky Way was just really intense. Two two totally different approaches. Yeah, no, it's, it's kind of funny. Though. I've got a guy that's texted me that's wishing he could uh, be part of this, but he doesn't have a webcam. <laughs> But he's he's watching what we're doing and um, he's texting me the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell him if he has any questions to text you, <laughs> and we'll try to answer them. Um, cool. Did uh, did you want to share any anything else, Josh? Um, you know, uh, yeah, I'd like to, but I can't. <laughs> it's not working for you. Yeah, um, but I, I'm actually I'm gonna I'm sending you real quick in in your mail so if you have a second. Okay, sure. Uh, I'm, I'm just sending you the before shot, just because I think I think a lot of folks see. I, I know when I when I when I took my first few uh, uh, shots of with uh, with the Milky Way, I was like, wow, how do people get those results? Like, you know, you, you just keep on seeing, and it's like, and, and so I, I was really disappointed, and I and I, I almost kind of gave up saying I just I'm missing some part of the equation here. Well, the, the part of the equation here that I was missing was. A lot of those shots, including mine that you just saw a minute ago, and that you see online, that you see, you know, on 500 PX, they're all processed. Nobody yeah, they're all gets processed. those shots like that out of, you know, you know, just, just, just out of camera. Now, now, obviously, <laughs> you know, shooting raw, and, and you know, but you you have to recover. You have to work, kind of recover that, and and, um, and that's why I hear. And I just sent to you. It's a it's an export. It's only three megs, so hopefully you'll get it. You sent it an email. Yeah, I just sent you an email. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> <All right>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I didn't know how to. See. I can't get anything. It, it, it's still sending. It's going to take a second to send out. Um, <laughs> can I actually attach it in chat? Uh, just you can't screen share. Just try screen share again. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm supposed to, it says I'm supposed to get a little pop up when you when you when you hit the screen share. Yeah, yeah when you hit screen out. share, you get a little pop up. That's right. It just doesn't do anything. All right. And, Very well. And, uh, post it to your post it to your Google Plus, and then I'll I'll pull it off. Just share it privately with me or whatever, and then I'll pull it up. Okay. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll do That'll that. That'll be a lot faster than Gmail or <laughs> or email in general. Okay. Yeah, so. um Chuck wanted me to share the Folly Beach shot that I took, and I'm gonna I'm gonna actually show a before and after of that if I can find it all. Um, I'm gonna do the after first. Uh, let's see if I can find it. That would be good. Okay, here we go. All right, did we just lose Tommy? Uh, I'll drop the connection, but I'm back. Okay, you're back. All right, very good. Okay, so I'm going to screen share this shot. Um, so now, so this is this is my shot of uh, of the Milky Way over Folly Beach, um, over the water, uh, and uh, it was captured at like two, three, three a.m. Somewhere around there, 3:30. Um, now the the lights of downtown Charleston are not far from from Folly Beach. You guys are probably aware of, of how close this is. It's it's very close, uh, and uh, and the the detail that you can pick out over the over the water is just incredible. Um, now there's some light pollution happening here on the right side of the image, over here, uh, and that's from construction that's going on at the at the uh, uh, park that they're rebuilding. It got washed away with one of the storms that came through here. 
Um, and I was actually my goal for this evening was to was to go all the way down to the end of Folly Beach down here, uh, where there's a lone tree sticking out of the water, and I was going to frame the Milky Way um, behind that lone tree. Uh, and it was going to be super dark down there, nothing, you know, nothing interfering with uh, with the shot. Um, but the construction uh, was creating rivers um, that uh, prevented me from from getting down there. So that was very disappointing. Um, and I'm gonna, Chuck. I think I've unmuted you. Have I unmuted you now? No, I haven't. Okay, there we go. I think I got you now, Chuck. Um, in case you want to ask any questions, so I, I did the same processing technique, uh, Josh, that you that you talked about, uh, and uh, you know mostly levels, and and I did some color color adjustments um, or color. There's a tool in Photoshop. Um, I think it's color separation. Um, and uh, I uh, I painted back in the the Milky Way uh, a little bit, uh, retained some of the color there, and it attracted some of the color from from the other portions. Um, and I actually processed this one a couple of times. Firstly, on my laptop, uh, and I really liked it. And then I brought it up on my big screen monitor, and I didn't like it as much. So then I reprocessed it. <laughs> um, but yeah, this I've was... actually already reprocessed the one I just did earlier because uh, I, was on, I was planning on showing off the, the Photoshop app so you can see all the layers and everything. And as I was doing, I was like, "Well, I like this better." <laughs> yeah. So it, you, the more you do this, the the you know. The better you get at it, uh, and uh, the better uh, um, your your shots end up. It's it's amazing, you know. The the data is there, like you said. The you know, capture the raw shot, um, it's there. As long as you find a dark enough sky and uh, and set this, you know, set the camera settings appropriately. So this this lens that I used for this shot is is not an especially good one for taking uh, star pictures. Um, it's a uh, actually a DX lens that I mounted on my full frame camera. Uh, and I shot it at 16 millimeters, um, and there's there's some heavy vignetting happening. Uh, there's some coma. There's some chromatic aberrations. There's there's a lot of issues, um, and yet the image still came out great. And I really you know I really like it. Um, I especially like the movement in the in the water here. It's hard to see on this on this monitor, um, but but uh, I really like the the overall uh, image. Yeah, the the, uh, the the coma or comma, um, however you say <laughs> that. I, I I love I love the colors and the get that, that you pulled out for the. Uh, yeah, it's awesome. And, the, and uh, even Joel, my the my the texting friend, uh, says he really likes that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Joel. I appreciate that. Yeah, he's. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think I don't think Josh can hear you, Tommy. No, I'm sorry. I, I don't think so. But that's all right. <laughs> Josh can't hear anybody. He's in his I can own, hear myself. He's in his own phone booth. <laughs> oh, by the way, I, I posted that uh, the before shot. Um, okay, I will go and find oh, it. Oh yeah, bring that up. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry, Tommy. I was probably talking over you. Can, oh, that's all right. That's all right. I can hear you though. Can you not hear me? Can you guys hear me? I hear you, Tommy. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm just going to share one more here um, of a shot Can you that I bring up Josh's uh, original. Hold on a second. I'm going to share this one first, and then okay. uh, and then I'll bring that one up. Um, so this was a uh, this was another shot um, with that same lens, but this time on a on a DX body. Uh, this was out in uh, in Colorado at um, at a lake at about 12,000 feet of elevation uh, in the fall. You can just see some aspen color on the, on some of the trees here, some some fall color, uh, and this is actually the moon right here, uh, illuminating the, the moon, the, the lake, uh, and uh, you can see all the stars out here. Um, so I, uh, in, for this shot, I, you know, we we just finished camping and and had our campfire and all that going on. Uh, there's actually some campers in some of these areas over here. Um, and I just set up here right next to the lake and decided to take a take a longer exposure and see if I could get some reflections of the of the stars in the um, in the in the lake. And uh, I I really like the peaceful sort of nature of this. Um, it's not it's not especially a star shot, but I I just you know I really like it. It's it's astrophotography still, so it's it's kind of one of my favorites. It's got a calming sort of sort of sense to it. Um, so anyway, that's that's those. Uh, so now let's share yours, Josh. Let me go find it. It's under your page, 
Uh, I shared it with you. I guess. Okay. I, I guess that would. I'm not sure how that works. Got it. All right. So that's before. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So you did you did quite a bit of, of work to the to the ground here, like you like you said. Yeah, I, I, I didn't find anything real of interest to the ground, so I just pretty much, you know, uh, uh, there was some reflection on the tarp underneath your, your tent, mm -hmm. which I removed. Uh, didn't get added too much to it. <laughs> uh, and it was a blue tarp, so it kind of added the wrong glow. And, um, yeah, so I, I really was going more for the silhouette on the landscape with the tent popping and then actually just, you know, make the... Uh, uh, make the Milky Way pop there. But, you know, when I first looked at this, if you see a lot of the clouds to the right, I was all worried, and the clouds at the at the horizon, I was like, hmm, is that too much clouds? But uh, That is an incredible amount of clouds on the right there. Yeah, yeah. I didn't see that see that on the shots that I got. Yeah, I think you, you, were, I think you shot uh, quite a few frames before I got my camera out. Yeah, I think maybe. the clouds had started to move in. Yeah, maybe. Well, some great processing for sure. It came out came out really well. It's always good to look at the before, before or after, and then look at the after again. That's really spectacular. The amount yeah. of uh, it's just like, I, like I said, the, the reason I wanted to really show the before and after because I think it's it can be discouraging to new for folks that are new to star photography that they, they see these end results and then they they see what's in camera and they they give up because I I know I I did the first couple times because I was just Really not happy with the results, but uh, it's really the post processing on these kind of shots that really uh, that pull out that that detail and make make the picture what it is. That's yeah, very, very nice stuff, man. Very nice. Thanks. All right, very good. Uh, Unscreen share. There we go. Um, well, great. Does anybody else have anything else they want to share or or? Or any uh, any inspiration from from others? I know that I've got lots of uh, folks that I look to that uh, I really enjoy their star stuff. Um, I'm not sure if we we need to share those here. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch, but it, if uh, if you guys want to, we can we can touch on those briefly. What do you, what do you say, Josh? Uh, you know the, the 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 first person that kind of got me into the first photographer I noticed, and it's, I've, I've I've honestly seen. There's a little bit of better work out there, but I've, I've always enjoyed his work. Is uh, I'm probably gonna butcher his last name. It's uh, Ben. Is it Canales? It's uh, B E N C A N A L E S. That's pretty close, I think. Ben yeah. Can ben Canales. Uh, and, uh, uh, and and I follow a little bit of Dave Morrow. Morrow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, probably butchering that name too as well. Uh, uh, but uh, they both have uh, they both have pretty good portfolios. Ben is more known for his his. his his night sky work, uh, but uh, he's got some some pretty extraordinary stuff. He also does a lot of time lapses, which are kind of neat. Uh, but um, but yeah, I've enjoyed his work and, and, and Dave's work. Uh, he's got some good stuff. I think actually, you know, the, the funny thing is, right after we, you know, you you had you had mentioned you know we were going to do this this evening. Probably a couple hours later, I saw that Dave is has a workshop <laughs> at, at Mount Rainier, <laughs> <laughs> right like, where you were. You know, right where right where I was. And unfortunately, when I was at Mount Rainier, I it was like just it was full moon. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> and and cool. you're just not going to catch much Milky Way with the full moon. Uh, but uh, but yeah, those are those are a couple that uh that, that I followed a little bit, and um, he's got some neat stuff. Yeah, so I believe that he won the uh, um, some kind of National Geographic uh, competition. Did he? Yeah, photo, that surprise photo, me. Photo of the year, I believe, this for this image. Oh really? Oh yeah, that's. Um, and, and it's just you know he was just playing around uh, and decided to lay down and uh, and and use his headlamp to illuminate the Milky Way, um, and it just I mean this is a stunning image, just absolutely right. incredible. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Every time I think, honestly, when I when I think of a tent shot, that this is the one I think of. I mean, you see them all over the place. I mean, it's it's very, uh, very common. But uh, yeah, he's got some great work. I've seen some of his uh, his stuff in the last little bit, um, where he's been shooting his Land Rover. Yeah, uh, yeah, his Land Rover shots. Yeah. Let me let me show you these. These are incredible with this with the stars trails in 
in the reflection in the. Nice. Isn't that just incredible? Yeah. Now, was he actually shooting? I saw when he was posting. Was he, was he actually doing some promos for Land Rover, or was this just kind of a happenstance thing? I'm not sure. Um, he should. He should be if he's not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you just, know, marking a Land Rover. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, this is this is an incredible shot right here. Uh, oh, yeah. And here's here's another one with the with the inside all illuminated. Um, and and you know you don't realize how much work goes into getting you know to pulling the shot off with the illumination inside and you know and the and the lights on the front being perfectly exposed. I mean that just that's really challenging. Um, and then you know and then picking up the uh, the stars in the background, just great great stuff. Absolutely beautiful. Um, so you said you said you mentioned another name as well, Dave Morrow. Dave Morrow, yeah, Dave Morrow has some. Uh, he, he has a he has a really nice one over Rainier, uh, of like this. It's just like this huge shot of the Milky Way over Rainier. Um, so I'll, I'll find that image real quick. But uh, yeah, as, I, like I said, he, he actually two or three hours after uh, after this, he uh, after after we set up the. Hang out here. They he announced a workshop. So is it uh, is it this one? Uh, let me see. How's it? Um, no, it's not that one. But uh, that's a good one though. That's a, that's, a, that's, <laughs> that's nice. Uh, I think that, that actually looks like uh, is that is that Rainier? That might be. Uh, that's what he says. Yeah, so. then that that would be either. Let me see. Um, it's, it's either paradise or sunset or, or, or sunrise, one or the other. Wow! Look at that. I wish I could find the one that, that I'm referring to. Uh, but he's he's got so many of them. There 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 are quite a few. Yeah, there's just some beautiful stuff. He's doing some neat fisheye stuff, which I've never used fisheye with uh, sky photography. But he's got some. He did some neat. There was a fisheye shot, and there was one of those one of those those little miniature world shots. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. That's uh, like uh, that's like that stuff that uh, Troy Caswell yeah. does. He, he's, uh, he's not he's not as exclusive to it as Ben is, but uh, he's got some nice stuff that I follow on occasion. Yeah, Troy's got some interesting stuff as well, Tommy. He um he he does yeah he does some of that mini world long exposure stuff. Yes, yeah, some good stuff. So here here Chuck is an example of the light painting um, that Tommy was talking about. This is not as as. Uh, as well, it is obvious, but it's not as uh, as uh, detailed as what Tommy was talking about running around inside a barn and all that kind of thing. Um, let me uh, let me unmute you. Can you can you unmute yourself? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. this is so bad. so bad. I hear the echo. I'm hearing it now. <laughs> that help any? Yeah, yeah that's. Yeah. No, I turned the no. volume down on my speakers. So, so actually, uh, Josh, yeah, Josh, this is this, this shot, shot right here, here is, is the, the uh, uh, was the inspiration for me to go out to Folly Beach and and shoot over the water out there. That's nice. Uh, I just love these uh, these these shots over the beach. And one of these, he's got a really sweet reflection, um, in in the you know in the tide. Which would be which would be tricky because you can't you know when you're out there you can't see this you can't see the water right. Um, you can just hear it, basically. It's got, it got a few meters. Oh. Yeah, he's just got some incredible stuff. That's crazy. Who is this? This is Dave Mara. Oh, oh this is, I didn't recognize that one. Hmm. Good I hadn't seen that one. Yeah. Uh, look at all these. these uh, I, I can't tell if they're shooting stars or satellites or what they are, but they're incredible. That's insane. I don't know if you have satellites going that fast, but yeah. Those are typically, yeah, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't seen that previous one. I thought Here, it's all. Here's, old. here's the one I really. This is the one I really liked. Um, uh, Alistair, can you go back to that one when, oh, when you man. get a chance? This one, one back. One more back. No, you just had it. Hmm. Uh, right there. That. Yeah. That might be some light painting involved there. I don't know. Yeah, I agree. Let's it see. could be. I, it's hard to say. Um. Yeah. Could, I, I. I would I think mean, so. I mean, look how close behind look how, him. You know, it would it would do the same thing. Yeah, I would think definitely light painting. Of some type. Because it's not. Yeah. I mean, it's not evenly illuminated. 
That's right. right. It's not. So it's probably. Yeah. It's and probably if he had a moon out that night, he wouldn't have gotten the Milky Way looking like that. No. Uh, Joe wants a Big Mac. <laughs> 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 Sounds oh, good. By the, by the way, Joel commented on both. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping uh, with shots. the uh, with the media shower coming up here uh, that uh, that I can get a little bit of uh, some meteors in with uh, with the Milky Way shot. We'll see, or at least a sliver of the Milky Way. Yeah, that that would be. You know, the the issue with the with the meteors is it's um yeah it's in the northern sort northern. of area and um. The Milky Way, the best portion of the Milky Way is in the southern uh, section, um, which is what we shot the other night, Josh, right? So, yeah. so that's the best okay. portion for, for, you know, for the most stars and the most color. Um, but you can still get good stuff in the northern section. Well, I think, I think if, if you point it towards the per well, not, not, not counting the, uh, the Milky Way, but if you, if you point it towards the, uh, the, uh, the star, the, what was it, first? Uh, Perseus? Perseus, is that how you Perseus? I'm horrible. Perseus. Yeah. Perseus works for me. If you point towards the Perseus and you get a nice long exposure, you can actually get, you know, the whole effect, that cone effect that they're all kind of, you know, coming out at you. Yeah, so so the uh, one of the images that I saw, and, and Chuck, you and I looked at this one today, or yesterday, um, which which was just stunning. Um, do you remember Do you remember who, who shot that, Chuck? Are you still on mute? You don't remember. Um, I posted it. I posted it somewhere. Where did I post it to? I believe I posted it to Facebook. Let's take a look. I'll find it here and share it with you guys. Here it is. Um, share it. So this is probably the best shot I've ever seen. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh, yeah. Gary Randall did that one. Yeah, Gary Randall. I don't know why I can't. I can't do. There we go. So, um, and he, he tells you what he did here. Um, so he set it, set it up for a time lapse, basically. And, uh, and then um, he rotated each of the shooting stars and combined them all. He rotated it based on the Earth's rotation, right? So how, however far they were past the, um, past the Milky Way when the Milky Way was in this location. He rotated it back, and then he combined all the shooting elements together with the uh, with a single frame of the Milky Way um, and it just I mean it's just stunning uh, and there's there's another one I believe is it Gary Randall as well with the with the shot of the of uh, um, of the, the the river and the, the mountain cliff I think let's take a look here see if I can find it Chuck I think you posted on I think you posted that image on your blog isn't that right? Where's your blog at? There we go. This one. Yeah, I mean, this is just stunning, right? Can you guys see this? Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. Just, that's insane. It's just gorgeous. That um, right one you got, wow. This one right here, yeah, just yeah. incredible. So, so you know, yeah. a, a, I did point out on my blog I did not take that picture. <laughs> <laughs> if you took that with a point and shoot, we'd be all bowing down right about now. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that's this is an incredible shot, uh, and it's it's you know it's the framing that really helps the composition. You know, it adds a little bit extra. Um, of course, this stuff is just spectacular, so that that doesn't hurt. All right. Well, I think uh, I think that's about it for me. Uh, anybody have any anything else? Any other questions, or should we wrap it up? No, it was very helpful. Enjoyed that. Great. So, were you going to go out? Uh, you going to go out tomorrow night? Uh, I've got uh, tomorrow night's book. Maybe Sunday. Maybe Sunday. Yes. the The best nights are going to be uh, Sunday night and Monday night um, for the number of meteors per hour. Type yeah, thing. they're calling. They were saying like between 100 and 150, weren't they? Something ridiculous for the for the early morning hours. Yeah. They're calling for nothing but rain up here, so <laughs> I'll be counting on you guys to uh, go out there and make it happen. Yeah. So tonight, tonight's the best chance of, of low cloud cover for us down here at the coast. 
Josh, I don't know what you've got. Well, I haven't been paying attention. I <laughs> probably should. <laughs> um, but but yeah, so so we'll we'll definitely go go out there and and try to try to get some uh, some shooting stars. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, I appreciate it, everybody. Thanks for joining. Thanks for sharing your tips and and your uh, um, um, your advice on your favorite, favorite locations. locations. Thank you. Thank, thank you for letting me play with the big boys. Yeah, thanks, yeah, thanks guys. guys. Everybody, Everybody say goodbye. Wave to the camera. <laughs>